Hi guys, I'm Phil. Uh, that's not what I say. <laughs> Hi guys, Phil here. Today I'm going to talk about why I love GameFell and why you should too. Let me start by saying this. I don't fight GameFell. I personally don't fight GameFell. That would be illegal. Reason number one. They are the most ethical bird to raise. Ethical? Well, how can that be? I'll tell you. Most people who raise game fowl do so free-ranging them. Now, the adult birds obviously have to be separated because otherwise uh, each cockbird would fight for dominance and kill each other. That's just a natural behavior in chickens, but otherwise... They live free range for the first, you know, 6 to 14 months of their life, which is a pretty long time for a chicken. For perspective, a broiler chicken lives 8 weeks, 8 weeks inside of a small cage that it can barely move in because otherwise it'll get injured and it just sits there and eats and eats and eats until it gets slaughtered. Never really lives a life. Even these people who have them on tractors, on pasture, uh, that's, not really, that's not really the same life that these guys get, because these guys are out here. These guys are just running, jumping, playing, eating bugs, eating grass. Just having a good old time. Just having a good old time like chickens should. I think it's fair to say that the life of a game fowl is better than 90%. The life of a game fowl is better than 90% of uh, other breeds of chickens. Reason number two: they save you money. Unlike a conventional chicken, like you see here in the foreground, getting bullied around by this hen. These guys don't eat much. Very little input. They take maybe three ounces of feed a day when they're full grown, and that's for a rooster. That's not very much at all. These hens here, these big girls, they can put it down, and you're gonna end up paying for that. They're good producers and they grow fast, but you have to weigh out, is that really worth the extra cost? The other thing is I don't vaccinate game fowl, and I don't know a lot of people that do. They also don't take medications. Well, mine don't. I don't use medicated feed. I don't give them medications. I don't vaccinate them. And that's going to end up saving you a lot of money. One bottle of Merrick's vaccine right now is something like 60 bucks. Plus, you have to get the needles and the syringes to administer it. You have to spend the time doing it. And you have to continue doing that for as long as you raise fowl. On the other hand, if you keep hardier birds, you're going to lose less of them to diseases and things like that. When one of these guys gets sick, they just get cold. Chickens are food, so they just get the axe, unfortunately. Infrastructure costs are almost nothing. I mean, you can get fancy if you want, but like you see here, if you can get a couple 2x4s or old recycled lumber, whatever it is, make a little 4x4 and get some wire for it, then you're in business. And that, it's not going to cost you more than 12 15 bucks. And to be honest, you really don't need infrastructure at all. If you wanted to, you could keep a couple of brood hens and a brood cock let them free range when they have their little biddies or whatever you let them raise them up and when they get to the age of harvesting you harvest them pull aside the ones you want to keep but the rest of them go in the pot and like I said very minimal input for these birds so it's not going to cost you very much at all to raise out a handful of them number three they make great pets
these guys are gentle. They're loving. They're intelligent. All around, really great pets. Now try that with a legern or a production bird. Number four, pest control. These guys are your 100% natural, all organic pest destroyers. These guys are literally anything. I've seen my chickens eat snakes, mice, rats, ticks, fleas, flies, maggots, grubs, grasshoppers, crickets, caterpillars, and I'm sure there's a thousand other things that I haven't seen them eat. But when I got here to this property, it was infested with ticks. I let these guys free range for a month and I had no more tick issues. They're also not too fond of rats and mice, which is pretty nice because I'm not fond of them either. Number five, they're also more nutritionally dense because these birds are out here eating bugs and protein and flying around and picking up dirt and minerals and it's going to be a lot better for them than if they're in a cage or if they're in just one single place for the rest of their life because they're not they're going to they're going to make that spot devoid of nutrients and minerals and then they're not going to be uptaking them anymore after a couple of months and that'll be that whereas if they're out free they can find whatever they need when they need it it also affects the ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s because if they're eating too much corn they're going to get chock full of omega-6s which are inflammatory and not really good for us. Well, they're good for us but just not in the ratios that we eat them. So when these birds are free ranging, like I said, they're eating bugs, they're eating grass. What that's doing is altering the ratio so they're more rich in omega-3 fatty acids which are a lot better for you, a lot better for your heart and overall well-being. So it makes the meat much healthier and it's tastier. It's not that bland garbage white meat. I can't stand that stuff. It takes a little longer to cook, you know, like any dark meat, but it's so much better. It's never dry, always flavorful. That stuff you get at the store is almost not chicken. Number six, they promote food security and biodiversity. These guys are a truly sustainable protein source. They breed their own babies, they raise their own babies. If you leave them to their own devices, they'll be able to survive on their own. It's a lot more than you can say about. A lot of the people I see doing pastured poultry on their farms they're bringing in these Cornish crosses and these Freedom Rangers and uh, they're claiming sustainability, but how sustainable is that really? Can you take those Cornishes and breed them and make more? No. You're going to have to go right back to what you're going to have to do once you harvest those because they are a terminal cross is you're going to have to go right back to that hatchery or right back to that right back to that factory farm and support them further and give them more money to keep doing what they're doing so how ethical or sustainable is that really not at all if you ask me I don't ever have to get outside genetics with these guys I don't ever have to buy chicks I don't ever have to vaccinate them 
I don't ever have to medicate them for the illnesses that have been bred into them. As long as these guys have a source of food and water, they're going to keep on living. The other thing is, one of the biggest crimes about factory farming is the monoculture thing. The whole idea that one particular breed is going to be the best for everyone in all situations. I understand wanting the bird that's going to produce the most, the fastest. But at the same time, what are you sacrificing for that? If you breed for vitality and vigor, you're making your proper selections, you're keeping enough genetic variation in your gene pool, when you get hit with these new super bugs or whatever it is that may be the virus of the week, they're going to be able to withstand it. They're going to be able to ride it out and you're going to get survivors and ones that can pass on those genes to the next generation. Number eight. They're a symbol of American heritage, courage, tenacity, grit, and self-sacrifice. A lot of people don't know this, but when this country was being founded and we were deciding on what our national bird was going to be, there were three names thrown in the hat. The turkey, the bald eagle, and the American gamecock. Now we all know the bald eagle won, but what a lot of people don't know is that the Gamecock only lost by a single vote. That's how popular the Gamecock was. George Washington was a cockfighter. Abe Lincoln was a cockfighter. Pretty much every founding father, to be honest. Cockfighting has fallen out of favor lately in America. It's important not to whitewash history. Even though these animal rights freaks and weirdos would make you want to. Even though cockfighting has fallen out of favor in the States these days, and it's actually illegal. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Cockfighting has been around long before us. And I really do believe it'll be here well after we're gone. Well, that's all I got for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good one. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.